Hi everyone. Let us learn a new topic today that is properties of ionic compounds. Before heading towards the properties, let's understand the definition of ionic compounds. They are compounds composed of ions held together by electrostatic forces. So example would be NaCl and KCl. NaCl is formed between a metal sodium and non-metal chlorine. So we must know that in periodic table is designed in such a way that the left side is more on the metals and of course we have the middle of the periodic table having the transition metals lanthanide and actinide. So they are all metals around 92 to 93 metals and the right side of the periodic table they are all non-metal. So chlorine is a non-metal and non-metals are electronegative so they are usually um, they uh, they withdraw electrons and hence they bear a negative charge and they are called as anion whereas metals they are electropositive that is they donate electrons they have a tendency to lose electrons and they gain a positive charge so that it becomes cation so all ionic compounds are formed by this type of a uh, arrangement uh, between a cation and an anion. So the bond is formed between a positive ion and a negative ion. So that's why um, the forces of attraction between the ionic compounds is very very strong. So this makes them very rigid and hard substances. So one of the questions that can be asked in exam is that why ionic compounds are very, uh, the, I mean talking about the physical uh, state, why is it that they are very um, rigid and hard? So that's the, the reason is because of the electrostatic force of attraction between the ions. Okay, that's the very, very strong electrostatic force of attraction. So this makes the compounds uh, very uh, rigid and hard. So now uh, some more examples would be KBr, calcium oxide and so on. Another name of ionic compounds is electrovalent compounds. Okay, so now let's um, head towards the properties of ionic compound. First one, physical nature, as I already told you, because of their electrostatic force of attraction, their nature of bonding makes them uh, very, very strong and they, may, they are uh, solids and also they are hard. Now coming to the second point, high melting and boiling point because of their intra-ionic in, uh, attraction. So let's uh, take an example. So NaCl. So basically students, all the compounds have their natural geometry. So this geometry mainly uh, helps the molecule or compounds to stay intact. Okay, so that's because they have these uh, uh, inbuilt um, inter-ionic forces which keeps them rigid. Okay, so now when we talk about NaCl, NaCl has this uh, cuboid lattice. So lattice is not, nothing but the geometry of how the electrons, sorry, how the, how the atoms are arranged within this uh, particular geometry. And within the cuboid, okay, we can expect uh, this type of a okay. So within the cuboid, we can expect. Um, a type of geometry where in the green balls that you can see they are sodium and the gray atoms are calcium uh, chlorine sorry okay so green is uh, sodium and gray are chlorine and you can observe how each bond each sodium is bonded to three chlorine atoms so this is just one part of the structure so like this you can just imagine infinite structure like this so Obviously, now we can expect why the melting point would be so high because the energy that's being provided to melt is basically used to break each and every bond. Are you understanding? So when it is, when we're talking about breaking of every bond present in the lattice, what happens is automatically the melting and boiling point of the particular ionic compound increases. So if you have a, if you look at the, um, readings here so we have NaCl at melting point of 1074 Kelvin and boiling point of 1686 
calcium chloride and calcium oxide respectively so now here uh, again when we talk about this high melting and boiling point it's only because of their geometry okay that's the arrangement of atoms in the particular lattice so makes them very rigid and to break all these bonds requires lot of uh, energy and hence they they are hence their melting and boiling point shoots up to more than 1000 and calcium oxide you can actually see it's 2850 melting point and 3120 as boiling point because that, that's the reason why ionic compounds have extremely high melting and boiling points now the third one would be solubility now as i already told you that ionic compounds are mainly made up of uh, a combination or bonding between two ions that is a positive ion and negative ion cation anion so here there is mainly a polarity that we can observe okay now similarly when you talk about solubility so let's say i have a beaker and in this beaker i have taken water as solvent now when i add nacl let's say i am adding nacl now it's very obvious that according to the force of nature there's always attraction between positive pole and negative pole similarly there's always attraction between a positive charged ions and negative charged ions right so here sodium is positive charged so it will be attracted to oxygen and chlorine is negatively charged and it will be attracted to hydrogen so this way students what's happening is nacl actually gets dissociated okay so it gets ionized as na plus and cl minus so that's the reason why solubility of ionic compounds is always high so whenever you want to uh, melt see even that we have observed already very well that salt when you try to dissolve in water it's so easy the same thing if you try to dissolve oil in water is so impossible so here again talking about the ionic compounds here mainly made up of positive and negative ions and when they are dissolved in water and water also has positive and negative so the like ripple and unlike they attract and this splits the sodium chloride into na plus and cl minus so this is the same trend with all the ionic compounds and hence we can observe high solubility in water and they are insoluble in organic solvents now the fourth one would be conduction of electricity again see conduction of electricity happens only because of two conditions one is free electrons so when you talk about free electrons it also means that there is lot of mobility within the uh, let's say if you're talking about a wire electrical wire so there's lot of mobility within the electrical wire with respect to the electron movement similarly when you're trying to conduct electricity in water also the the water also conducts electricity and all the ions that uh, i'm sorry the any compound that is being melted in the that's melted in the water they also will be split into positive and negative and whenever there are ions okay so whenever there are ions always there will always be 100% conduction of electricity so let's take one example so suppose i have taken water okay and in this water i have dissolved nacl so there's water plus nacl in this now let's say i am going to fix two electrodes okay and then i will connect it to a bulb so now and that's also further connected to a source now the moment i uh, the switch is on what is going to happen is the there will be conduction of electricity because sodium chloride now is in water and as i already told you it would have got ionized into na plus and cl minus and this na plus cl minus starts moving okay that is positive to negative terminal negative to positive terminal and as they are moving continuously what's happening there is movement of electrons that's their that is that is there is mobility within the wire and this will make the bulb glow so that's the reason why uh, 
conduction of uh, electricity is possible in ionic compounds okay so these are uh, some of the main properties of ionic compounds i hope it was helpful thank you